Well, the Department of Water and Sanitation has assured the public that the presence of antiretroviral residues in drinking water poses no health risk and cannot result in HIV transmission. This follows the release of a study by the Northwest University which found that significant concentrations of ARVs have been detected in South Africa's water sources, particularly downstream of wastewater treatment plants. Now this study found that concentrations of ARVs in some water sources exceeded acceptable thresholds, posing potential long-term health risks to humans. Well, to discuss this further, we are now joined by the Water and Sanitation Deputy Minister, David Machlobo. Deputy Minister, thanks for joining us. It's good to have you on the program. No, thank you very much, uh, Leanne, and a very good man to you and your viewers and my sister, um, Sakin. Deputy Minister, you obviously, uh, you know the study. Your department has already reacted, saying that the water is, is, is fine and that we shouldn't be alarmed. However, there, there, there certainly is a lot of worry from South Africans with regard to the study and the safety of the drinking water. So um, let's perhaps talk to your assurances that it is fine and that there isn't anything to be alarmed about. No, thank you very much, Leanne. Firstly, this is uh, an ongoing work by the department we came with a research institution, especially the Water Research Commission. Since around the year 2000, we've been working with a number of universities, Northwest, the University of Pretoria, looking at new emerging contaminants in the Bay because of human activities, but also more important of the climate change. You will know that um, we, we were all worried about a number of plastics that get to be deposited and produced in South Africa. In other words, the plastics become so small of a particle that it's not easy to measure, that even in our treatment system, whether the filtration system or the biodegradable system, that are there, they are unable to actually remove them. Then there was an emergence at the end of pharmaceuticals because South Africa were one of those countries that are using more in terms of our fight against HIV and AIDS. A number of people actually were enrolled into ARV and treatment programs. Around the time of COVID-19, you will remember that a number of people were able to discover the issues of traces of the strain of COVID-19. Mm. In terms of this study that has been discovered, the numbers are so small and negligent. Whether probably the use of the word of high concentration Lien is a concentration to what number? The number is one over a billion. In other words, it's measured in nanograms. And our current system, whether you do a water treatment, which is flocculation, in terms of chemical treatment, where you try to get the particles to come together, they become heavy, you trap them. Whether you do a, 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 a aerobic treatment where you use either oxygen or micro or micro or microorganism, it's not a matter of concern. If you could see most of these things where there's just a little bit a high number, the high number is on the wastewater treatment rates because the urinals of our people and excretions, they go to waste or treatment works. Yeah. But okay. it's a high concentration over a billion nanograms, over, over a billion grams, which is non negligible But these are some of the issues that we're discovering. There are no issues of major concern because you are finding issues like uh, traces of uh, uh, certain drugs that have been there. But if water was going to be polluted, it will be more on the issues of chemicals, heavy metals like your high nitrates and others that will cause problems. And then the issues of bacteria that can cause waterborne diseases. Those are the elements that are not today in our water. Yeah. But it does not necessarily mean the end that we must not be concerned about our water system. We produce the drop reports. Our blue drop, which is the issues of drinking water, and the green drop, which is effluent, a number of municipalities are not meeting certain standards. They must do it to their level best to meet the standards, ensure that they are transparent all the time. The results of water sample testing, they must be able to put it there. But from this research, our intention, more research must be done, more technologies must be looked at. When concentration are at the levels that can worry us, 
in terms of South African national standard, which is SANS 241 for drinking water, and the other SANS standards, yeah. it will then become a matter of concern. But at this stage, there is no any matter that will cause problems for South Africans. For I, I certainly do urge uh, South Africans to do their own research and to go and read that study and, and to talk to, you know, the issues that have come out in the study, because it is very important, and I know you're saying it's safe, but I think people need to educate themselves and see, you know, what it is that the Northwest University are saying measured against what you are saying, because there certainly is a big worry, Deputy Minister, about uh, poor wastewater treatment in some municipalities. It's not new. We get this all the time. And the problem with this is that it does pose very serious health risks. And, and, and South Africa are particularly concerned about these wastewater treatment plants. And they are falling short because there's just been no maintenance. They're poorly equipped. And it certainly is something that um, is, is, is a great concern for us. So perhaps you want to talk to us about the upgrading of them and how these wastewater plants are becoming an issue. We are absolutely correctly, and but when it comes to these traces, these traces, those of us who worked in the field some time back in the field of water, there are no issues because when you read the results, read them against microbial and chemical composition, against the international standards that we've adopted, which is science. But when it comes to the issues of the infrastructure, the end, we're very, very unhappy. That's why the president decided to prioritize the question of water and the fixing of local government because out of 144 water services authorities, 105 of them, our results, they show that it's not safe in certain instances because of poor maintenance, the capacity of the people and lack of investment. That's why we're putting the turnaround plan to assist them because they need to ensure that those workers are highly qualified they are tools of trade in terms of um, uh, treatment capabilities. The infrastructure is not overflowing and causing problems. But more importantly, citizens must demand that these municipalities must be transparent, especially around drinking water, that they must take samples and the results that go to accredited laboratories are posted on their websites and other platforms. So there is a degree of comfort that the water we use is fit for use. But more importantly, even for the food we consume, you don't want to be ingesting food with high level of contaminants like bacteria and chemicals. It will also impact on our economy because the World Trade Organization, in terms of health and hygiene, they are very strict. Our exports to other countries can diminish if our food does not meet those particular standards. Therefore, it is our duty to support these municipalities, but where they don't do their work, we must prosecute them because we cannot allow them to do pollution. We'll do support, but at the very same time, enforce our laws. All right. So, Minister, I have to let you go. But I, I think what's important and, and, and the message to get out there for South Africans in, in, in light of this, the study and the work of the University of the Northwest, um, are you working with them to... Uh, look deeper into this. I know you're assuring us it's fine. However, there is a finding. We need to take this seriously. Are you going to develop a regulatory guidelines or guidelines to improve wastewater treatment technologies and conduct further research to understanding the long-term ecological and human health impacts of these pharmaceuticals that we have found traces in, in our water? If you know, Liam, in our statement, it's very clear that the, the quantities are so negligible. It's so negligible. We must avoid to use things like high concentration. If we say something is below a billion, in other words, it's, it, it's, a, it's so negligible that even our treatment system has no problem. And ARVs have nothing to do with any ability to cause HIV and AIDS because it's a treatment methodology our country uses. But let's assume, if we speculate, that there are high concentration in potable water. If there were high concentration in potable water, the issues of the immune system becoming resistant to certain drugs, that would be one of the issues of concern. But we're not at that stage. These results and the numbers, they are so, so minute that they will cause no even effect even in terms of the taste in terms of water that you can be able to find. 
and our water still is of good quality. Therefore, that's why I'm insisting on the other component that you raise around the wastewater system, around chemical and microbial content. That would be an issue, but this one okay. has no impact in terms of microorganism. It has no high impact around the issues of chemical component. They are so minute that they have not been impact. But we need to do more research. Okay. The more the population size increases and the human activities increases, our issues of adaptability to say what is new that is coming into the system. Very shortly, we will, with Minister Majordina, be launching the study again, the results of the study we've done with the Water Research Commission around the presence of microplastics. That's why we're working with Environmental Affairs, working with the DTIC. There was an issue of burning of plastics okay. because they are becoming the biggest component in our water bodies. Indeed. But at this stage, in the end, the numbers are too small that you can't right. even measure them. Deputy Minister, we thank you for coming in and talking to us and, uh, and, and giving us the department's view on the study from Northwest University. So David Machlobo is, of course, the Water and Sanitation Deputy Minister. That's his reaction and the department's reaction to a study that revealed significant concentrations of ARVs in water sources.